In Love Hate, a character's personality and relationships are represented by a faction. Factions are maintained in a faction database. To create a faction database asset, select Create Pixel Crushers Love Hate Faction Database. The first section is Personality. Here you can define the personality traits that you'll model in your characters. The Templates foldout has some examples that you could start with, such as the traditional ocean model used in psychology. There's also an example containing personality traits appropriate for a typical role-playing game. In this tutorial, we'll just define a simple alignment trait, where negative values are more evil and positive values are more good. Values in love-hate are generally in the range of negative 100 to positive 100. So a character with plus 100 alignment would be angelic. Factions can also have relationships to other factions, which is a key part of love-hate. Each relationship can be measured in a number of different ways. The basic relationship trait is affinity, which is a general measure of love or hate for the other faction. You could add more traits such as respect, lust, obligation, and so on. For now, we'll stick with affinity. Factions can be parents and children of other factions. The inheritance dropdowns for personality and relationships specify how child factions inherit the values of their various parents. Presets are templates that you can apply to factions to save time. For example, all villagers in an RPG might be based off the same template, but then customized. For this tutorial, we won't define any templates. Factions are where it all comes together. A faction can represent a group or an individual. Each character typically has its own faction, although they may have parent group factions in common. For example, in an RPG, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker might all have their own faction, but they could have a villager's parent faction in common. For some generic characters, such as generic goblins in an RPG, you can apply the same faction to all of them. In each faction, you'll specify its parent factions, if any, its personality traits, and its starting relationships. Note that these can all change during play. Typically, parents only change when you manually change them with an API call or visual scripting action. But personality traits and relationships will change automatically as characters witness events in the game. To save typing, I'm going to switch over to a faction database in which I've already set up factions. In this database, the orc faction is a child of the monster faction, for example. After we've defined factions, we'll need to set up the representations of those factions in the scene by adding faction members. First, add a faction manager game object by selecting game object love hate faction manager. Assign your faction database. Then inspect a character game object and add a faction member component. First, specify the faction that this game object represents. PAD is a standard psychological model that represents a character's emotional state across three vectors, pleasure, arousal, and dominance. When a character experiences something that it thinks is good, its pleasure increases, and so on. We're going to skip the rest of these values for now. They're used to fine-tune the way faction members work. Tooltips and the manual explain them in detail. At this point, 
I'll load a scene in which I've added faction members to a number of characters. The last step is to define deeds, which are events that can happen in the game. Note that a deed doesn't actually perform the gameplay event. It simply reports that the event, such as a sword swing, has occurred. The event itself is performed outside of love-hate, such as with the player controller script on the player. Deeds define what the events mean to love-hate characters. You can report deeds entirely in code, but it's easiest to predefine them in a deed template library. In the project, select Create, Pixel Crushers, Love-Hate, Deed Template Library. Here, I've created a simple deed template library with one deed, which reports that an actor has killed a subject. Let's examine the details. You can require that characters have a clear line of sight to witness the deed, and that they must be within a certain distance. In this case, we'll skip that. Then we'll define what the deed means to witnesses. Impact specifies whether the deed is good or bad for the subject. Getting killed is clearly bad, so it's set to a negative value. It's also an aggressive act, so aggression is high. This affects witnesses' dominance in the pad values. Finally, all personality traits in your faction database will be listed here. When a character judges a deed, it will judge deeds more kindly the closer the deed's personality traits align with the character's personality traits. Add a deed reporter component to the player and assign the deed template library. Finally, we use a variation of the player controller script that reports the deed. The complete love-hate API is online, but in this case, it's simply a call to the deed reporter's report deed method. The full API lets you do much, much more, such as creating new factions at runtime and changing parents and personalities. But in this video, we're just introducing the basics. Before we play the scene, I've also added a faction member debugger component to the characters. This utility component shows brief love-hate information above the character's head. If we attack an orc, you'll see that the witness's relationships and paths have changed. These deeds are also recorded in the character's memory. Memories remain for durations that are based on their relative importance to the character. Your other AI and branching conversations can check the resulting affinity values to decide on actions. In the next video, we'll cover automatic reactions.